Coming to you from Dover, Ohio and Somerville, South Carolina. Two cities with absolutely nothing in common until now. This is Make Photography Great Again, a weekly podcast of commentary on the photographic industry. And now, here are your hosts, Master Photographers Christine Walsh-Newton and Ted Linsack. Howdy ho, neighbors! We are back for <laughs> episode number two of the Make Photography Great Again podcast. Of course, we had our inaugural episode the other day, and this is the brilliance that continues, which is this podcast. Um, that your greeting was fun. not brilliant. Cool. That that was not Heidi Ho. Yeah. What kind of brilliance uh, well, is that? You, know. <laughs> you want to be folksy, though. You know what I'm saying? Folksy. Is it folksy or folksy? What would be the appropriate... Um, I, I don't know. I've never heard the L pronounced, but I like it. We could start a new trend. Full, yeah, I guess. Well, yeah, obviously, you know, I, don't, I don't know where I'm going with that, but yeah, it's you, know, you want to like, have that Southern, um, I am from you, South Carolina now, you know, I'm, how do you pronounce Boca? That's it. Yeah. Well, Boca, <laughs> I think I told you that Boca, if I remember correctly, I believe they added that to the Webster's dictionary this year. They actually added Boca. So I don't know. Wow. I have no idea. I mean, do you know the origins of that word at all? I mean, like, who actually came up with that? Is that rooted in anything? I mean, I've always known it just from photography, but actually, do you have I any clue? Actually, I think that it is, and, you know, the wonderful power of Google allows me to look that up while we're talking. So you go ahead and chat, I, I, I would and I'll love let to you know. know what I come yeah. up with. Yeah, I'd love to know. Well, huh. you know, we're at this time of the year that this sounds bad, okay? Everything do I? I, it's, I seem like every time I start something, I say that this is going to sound bad. It's like uh, yeah, it's you say theme. that a lot. But so yeah, so we're at the end of March, and this is like the time where wedding season is about to kick in. And I love weddings, and it excites me. But part of me is like slightly sad because you know what happens is like this off season. As much as you know, in South Carolina, we don't have much of a winter. It's actually quite pleasant. But you, you kind of look forward to that time. It's like, wow, it sucks that you know we don't have this this amazing cash flow that's flying in. But it's like, wow, that off season is kind of cool because you can chill and you can do some different things. But this is what happens every year, okay? So we get to like December, mid December, and you know we have a two or three month period where we don't have many weddings. And I always have this list, you know, of all this stuff I'm going to do in the off season. You know, so it's like all, all these different goals and stuff. And then we get to the end of March, and I look back at that list, and I realize that I've not done any of it at all. You know, and um, it's like, wow, we're about to get back in a wedding season. And I mean, am I the only one that, that you're putting the longer? wrong things on your list, Ted? OK, so here's what I want you to do. I have some advice for you. And I think that this is really going to okay. work. All right. Listen in. OK. OK. What I'm you listening. do is yep. you bring up that list and you take everything off of it and you replace it with one word. Fishing. And then you will have. God. Every year, you will have satisfactorily completed your that, list. <laughs> that is exactly, I feel like, what I did the past three months, you know? Uh, that is exactly it's, what it's you It's amazing. Did. Like, so here's this thing. So I just went, so I was just fishing, obviously, for a few days. So, I, so, okay, let's just say this. I don't fish, I fly fish, okay? I'm a little bit elitist with that. I don't, I don't fish with bobbers and worms and all that crap. Not that there's anything wrong with that, okay? But I fly fish, okay? Because I fished for years. I never got into it, and I got into fly fishing primarily for trout, but I fly fish for anything, but trout is the main thing, like, maybe already three years ago. And once I got into that, it's, like, consumed my life completely. So so just to put that out there, fly fishing, again, not an elitist or anything like that. You um, so I just really... went. I've been gone for, for, for two. What, what? What do I sound like? You sound snobby. I don't fish. I no, well, fly I'm... fish. <laughs> well, I, it's just how it is. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, I have no problem with anyone doing whatever they want. I'm just saying that I fly. I fly. Okay, it's like when people, when you fly fish and people are like, what do you use for bait? Okay, so here's the thing. I went on this trip, okay? I went on this fly fishing trip. So um, there's this guide I fly fish all the time. So Jeff Wilkins, if you guys are looking for um, someone to take you out guiding anywhere in the southeastern, like North Carolina area, South Carolina, uh, Tennessee. Okay, Jeff's the guy to catch. So um, to catch, get it? The pun? Okay. So I just he can't does these believe, trips throughout the year. I can't believe in a photography <laughs> podcast that you are pushing yeah. a fly fishing guide. Come on. No, no, no. This is, this is, this is going somewhere. It okay. really isn't going somewhere. You go ahead and go they, somewhere with that. 
No, so I was on this trip, okay, so he does these, like, trips where it's, like, a two- or three-day thing, and it's, like, lodging, and, and you fly fish out in, in the mountains of North Carolina, so I just did this trip, and I just got back yesterday, which was awesome, it was great, super cool, but there's this guy, this super nice guy, um, these two guys that I was fishing with who were also on the trip, but this one guy was, like, kind of brand new into fly fishing, he doesn't fly fish very much, and he kept ref- he kept saying these things, you know how, like, people say certain things, and inside, you, you smile, and you have the conversation, but inwardly, it's like you're devising a way to like murder this person you know what i'm saying and it's like this guy kept referring to the flies as bait he's like what are you using for bait and he kept saying bait all the time and that just drove me freaking insane because it's not bait it's a fly i mean it's like we're not using bait we're not using night crawlers or worms or anything like that i mean you're you're using these little flies that are tied specifically to what the fish are eating and it's like like that sounds elitist right but that drove me freaking crazy why you know, didn't so, you then he say kept, like, something? You would say it if it was no, a photographer. It's just a, <laughs> it's just a dumb thing. It's just a dumb thing, but it just drove me crazy. So I, I try not to be that way in photography. Like, am I like that in photography? Am I that much of an elitist? I try not to be, but that um, just drove me nuts. So what am I What am I getting at with this? Um, no, so fishing. So I'm gone for two days, and every time I go for a few days and I fish at the end, I'm like, wow, that was that was good, but now I'm ready to go back and do some other stuff and get some work accomplished and all that. And I've had my fix, right? That's always my thinking. But I swear to God, every time this happens, I get back, and then the next day I'm like, Dude, I want to go fishing again tomorrow. Like, I, it always happens. Like, it's like a drug. It's like an addiction. You know? I was just so going to say it's, it's, uh, something about yeah. that. You know, you should look into a 12-step program, Ted. I, I should, but it's kind of like print competition, right? I mean, we haven't – this is podcast number two, but print competition is kind of that way, right? It's like you go oh, through yeah. your districts and your IPC, and we all go nuts, and you know, me and you would go back and forth, and it's a chaotic thing. And at the end, I'm like, God, I'm never going to do this again, right? How many times have I told you that I'm not entering next year? Like, I say that all the time. Every I say that partially to time. tweak you. I say yeah. that partially to tweak you because then, then it's like, oh, no, you have to enter, you know? And then it's like, you know, it's that kind I of know. deal. But, but... It's ridiculous that I would even believe <laughs> that you wouldn't enter. I mean, what planet have I been living on for the past two? years that I've known you, there will not be a deadline go by that you don't enter. So I should just stop nagging at you, right? I know. See, I say that to tweak you because I know it tweaks you, but you know it doesn't work anymore. But the thing is, after a day or two, it's like, I want to do it again. You know, it's like that, that all the exhaustion wears off and like you want to go back at it. You know, you want to, you know, it's come up with the next concept and, and try to outdo yourself. Because honestly, print competition... You know, I think it has a bad rap in a sense, you know, and, and when I talk about print competition, I'm really talking about more of the PPA or the Professional Photographers of America style of print competition. And WPPI is a little bit of a similar system, but that's kind of the realm that I'm talking about, because I think when people hear like photo contests, a lot of people conjure up these images of like Facebook competitions or like people like images and that and i'm not gonna, I'm not really talking about that. I'm talking about the PPA style where it's a little bit more like how would you describe it? Christine, if, if you had to describe it in like a handful of sentences, what is the PPA print competition system? Um, you know, I would say I would liken it to the juried process. Um, if any artists are familiar, you know, you go to put your stuff in a show and it has to go through a selection process. It, it's juried in, you know, you go through a juror process and they say, yes, this piece is good enough to hang in our gallery. Um, it's kind of like a peer review by really, really educated peers. Um, and it's a way to measure your growth. It's a way to kind of measure where you are um, against your, your competitors, your friends, your, you know, other photographers that are good. I, you know, I've gotten my master's degree. That's kind of where you go in comp. You you earn certain credits for the images that do well, and you eventually wind up with a master of photography degree. And um, a lot of people kind of ditch competition at that point, but I've discovered that it, it is a constant learning improvement kind of thing. And I will do comp till the day I die because I learn something every, every single time. It just, it motivates me. And I totally get where you're talking about the whole deadline thing, um, because Ohio just had their competition last weekend, as you well know, because you took Photographer of the Year, and I took Master Artist of the Year, and that's just really, really awesome. If everybody doesn't know, Ted and I are really, really good buddies, so to um, share that little uh, 
pedestal with him. That was such crazy. a blatant. That was such a blatant humble brag that you added in that no one's going to believe that that was a genuine, uh, genuine interaction. But no, uh, that's genuine. No, really, because I. <laughs> oh, you know how much I wanted you to, because uh, I knew that I had the Master Artist of the Year already, because that competition had very few entries, so we knew the results way ahead of time, and I was really, really rooting for you. And uh, when I discovered that you actually pulled it off, I was, I was pretty verklempt. Actually, um, but anyway, what? What, what? Wait, what was that word? You know, talk amongst hey, yourselves. I life. probably said it wrong. It's that Saturday Night Live thing. Um, but anyway, back to oh my Ohio. God, I have no clue. What the that day means, I yes. got, yeah, because Saturday Night Live was before you were born. Okay, so anyway, Ouch. I got back from Ohio, yes. and you would think that after having just been through two weeks of preparing my stuff for a deadline and then going through two days of competition and all that stress, you would think that I would want to come home and never touch my camera again for at least a couple of days. But I was in the studio the night I got home and I was just so motivated. I saw so much, you know, here's the other thing, the work that you see by other people can inspire you. You know, it's not just that my work yeah. was critiqued and now I know what to do to make it better. Oh my gosh. It's like getting to see, uh, art gallery show of your very own and you just sit there and watch all the cool stuff come across i am talking with my hands i just reached out and knocked over a bunch of pencils i am so, i love this topic god Thanks. you are out of control i know out of control, out of control. Officially out i of love control. comp well what's the deal so here's the thing with comp i think it's uh, let's see if you agree with this i find it sometimes incredibly hard to explain what print comp is to someone, even a photographer that maybe has been around for a while and is very accomplished in their own right to explain what print comp is or just to talk about why you should do it or why you should want to do it. I find that to be such a hard conversation. I mean, do you, do you, do you tend to find that, that it's kind of like, how do I explain this to someone that, you know, has no clue about it? Yeah. You know, I teach, um, my specialty is teaching competition um, techniques, rules, etc., to brand new competitors. The, those are the people that I like to deal with. They don't know anything about it. You know, curious little. It's kind of like teaching kindergarten. There are teachers that are just really good with kindergartners. <laughs> so I'm really good with the kindergartners of photography competition. Um, and they kind of come in with the wrong idea. They think it's a contest. They think, you know, um, it's like you, the judge's favorite images. That actually kind of annoys me because they're like, the judges didn't like my work. It's like, no, that's not the deal. Here's the deal. There are 12 things that they look at. And a lot of those 12 things, at least half of them, are technical aspects. You know, we want to see that you know how to use lighting. We want to see that you know how to color balance your stuff, to put color harmony into your work. We want to see that you know good composition. We want to see that you your technique is good. Uh, you know how to post-process, you know. Um, we want to see that your technical competence is there. Everything needs to be in focus. Um, your depth of field needs to be appropriate to what your subject matter is. Um, then there's the creative stuff. You know, there's impact, creative, creativity, storytelling. So it's a balance of technical competence and creative competence. You know, the artist in you gets satisfied on that creative side, but the scientist in you gets satisfied on the technical side. So it's a really nice balance of art and science, I think. Yeah, no, I think that was... Um... That was brilliantly ex explained, of course, in your in the scholarly way that you would explain that. Um, you know, I think <laughs> my kind of my 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 test that I use. So when I look at any competition, not that I really do, I don't really do any other kind of competitions except for the PPA print comp. But the reason I do that is there's kind of three three things that I, I kind of look for in a competition. Like if I were to find some other sort of competition, I would kind of say, okay, if I'm going to enter this, here are three things that I want to make sure that I accomplish. And if I don't, it's probably not worth it. Um, I think number one, is this something that's going to grow my craft or is going to grow my expertise? Am I going to become a better photographer for participating in this? Okay, that's number one. Uh, number two, is it going to push me creatively? So is it going to make me go outside of my box and is going to force me to maybe reevaluate some things that, um, you know, I don't know, maybe I'm stuck in a rut and I'm doing the same kind of images. Is it going to push me out of that to really see the world in a new way and create something that maybe surprises myself? Um, and number three is something that's going to expose me to other amazing work that's going to help push everything. That's going to help push my own creativity. That's going to help me, 
you know, just shoot for something a bit better to see what other people are doing. Um, those are the three things I use, and I feel like the PPA style of print competition, um, you get all those things. I think a lot of the competitions you see online, um, and not to badmouth any of them, but I mean, there's 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 these there's just a couple of big sites that do you know annual competition. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm not saying like there's something wrong with doing that, but a lot of these sites where it's like, hey, go and like these images, and whoever gets the most images, I feel like. The number one thing I mentioned about me growing in my crowd, I don't think that accomplishes that. Because if we're basing things on just likes, good lord, we can go down the road of, of of images. I mean, I've had my own images that suck that people like, and it's like yeah, that's not the best indication of if, am I really uh, as good as I as I should be, or am I, you know, am I getting that feedback to help me grow? Where I feel well, like the PPA there's, system, there's your you point your right there. Feedback. Yeah. Um, a lot of contests, yeah. you know, they they pick the winner, and that's it. You know, the, the decision yeah. has been made yeah. in in PPA style print competition. There is feedback. You know, you have a panel of judges and sometimes they all agree on the score that your image should get and they don't discuss it. But sometimes they do discuss it and you get feedback on what's not quite right with this image, what you could have done better. Um, and that's how I look at it. I don't take that as this is why this image is bad. It's this is what could be better the next time you try this kind of image. I look at it as a growing and inform informational kind of process. And so we do grow. We get the feedback, and that does make us better. So that satisfies that first requirement that you have, and that's why. It definitely grows you as a photographer. And I hate – it's such a blanket statement because um... – I mean, I tend to say people that compete, I think, in general, are, are better photographers. That's that, that's a tough statement. I, I I kind of agree with myself on that, but, I mean, the flip side is there's a lot of amazing photographers out there that never compete that are, that are incredible. I just think, though, in general, if you have the opportunity, let's put it this way, I don't think it can hurt you. No, you know, I, think, I don't I think, think so anything, either. I think, if anything, you're going to learn from it and you're going to grow from it. Um, but that brings the question, I think, the misconception that a lot of people have, um, or maybe some people um, – some people maybe tend to bastardize the system a little bit. Can I use that word? Can I use bastardize? Is you okay just did that? twice. Um, it's one of my favorite words. Um, okay. It's just, it really fits the topic. Okay. So, <laughs> but a lot of people have this idea that competition is all about people winning awards. You know, this, this quest for trophies. Ugh. So what do you, what do you think of, what do you think about that? I mean, is there, is there any, okay, let me put it this way. Number one, is there any good, that can come from the, the the motivation to win something. Is that is there is that a good kind of thing that can drive you in, in any way? Is it good or is it all bad? Or what do you think? Well, when you talk about motivation, there is no good motivation. There is no bad motivation. Um, motivation is specific to each person, and I'm I'm going to go. <laughs> All geeky on you here. I don't know that you know you said Uh-oh. this. I'm off. gonna cut you off in thirty seconds, but go ahead. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you look at psychology and you look at motivation and motivational theories and why people do things, they all have different motivations. Um, it depends on their intellectual um, level, basically. Um, some people are motivated by rewards. And so trophies fits that motivation. Some people are motivated by esteem from, you know, respect from their fellow professionals um, being told they did a good job, which is not always a bad thing. I know we just watched a movie where we talk about, you know, good job was not, uh, it was what, the the worst phrase in America, something like that. Oh, but, um, yes. Whiplash. You know, just knowing that your, yes. your peers approve and respect you, that's another motivator. Another motivator is, um, you know, photographing just for the pure joy of it and, or, you know, entering to make yourself better with with no consideration to what you're going to get out of it that's another level of motivation so you know I think in competition I don't care what your motivation is to get in there that's good I'm glad you're there but I do have to say the trophy thing it gets on my nerves we'll just put it that way (laughs) I think it can be a big problem I mean I, I agree with everything you're saying I guess my take on it I feel, okay, so if I do a really good job, if I come up with whatever concept I'm doing, whatever my entry is, I mean, if I've really gone outside the box and I've created something that really is exceptional, chances are that I probably will win something for that. Now, is that my first goal? No, it's not. It really isn't. But it's 
it's just a, I mean, this seems, I guess, very obvious, but it's just a byproduct of pushing myself to somewhere where I haven't gone, you know? So it's like when I, when I do that, it tend, what tends to follow from that is, um, is that recognition of, of, of achievement, you know? Um, I think people can definitely be pushed by that a little too much when it becomes all about that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that can be a problem, but I, I just view it as that comes second. It's yeah. what can I do that's going to do incredibly well. That's the goal, you know. And then again, it's like a, it's like a train, you know. It's like a, it's like a flow chart or whatever you want to call it. I mean, if when I do something really well, that means that all the pieces came into place. That means that I, I accomplished and I did these, you know, I did the, my lighting was great and all these things were good. I mean, it's kind of you go backwards from that, and everything that stems from that is something that's helping me grow. You know, okay. and that trophy at the end or whatever is just kind of like it's the achievement that I did excel, and, and I. Again, it can be taken the wrong way. I think people just are all about that, and it's all about bragging and all that kind of stuff. I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with being proud of, of achieving something. That's a good thing. Yeah, um, it's a good thing. But, but think... you know what? You're coming. You're coming from the aspect yeah. of self-actualization. If you want to go back to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, that psychological concept I was referring to earlier, without saying what it was, you are coming from the highest level, which mm. is self-actualization. You are doing this to make yourself better. You are doing this for the sake of doing it well. And for you, the trophy thing that might be somebody else's motivator is just the icing on your cupcake, you know? God, I love cupcakes. I know, love, love, I know. Cupcakes. That's why I said it. <laughs> we almost talked about this before, but, um, okay, guys, the best cupcake I ever had, okay, was a banana, <laughs> a peanut butter and banana cupcake in New York, Okay, we were at, I forgot, it was, um, actually, I think at the Freedom, to the the world the New World Trade Center, or the Freedom Tower, whatever they call it there, there's a place inside there that we went in there, we had lunch, and they had this cupcake place, and it was freaking amazing. And if you guys know me, I'm in a stage now where I eat way too many cupcakes, so I'm trying to get off that, but, um, God, they were amazing. Amazing. I have no <laughs> idea what we're talking about. Trophies. Okay, but we were, trophies. we were talking the about. quest for trophies. Right, we were talking about Why trophies. can't cupcakes be trophies? Why can't cupcakes be trophies? Like, you know who what? wants a freaking a bowl? Who wants a, a trifle bowl when you can have oh my a gosh. dozen cupcakes? Ted, that's pronounced trifle. <laughs> trifle. I mean trifle. Trifle. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> I said that just so you would correct me because I know okay, you well, love. Let's, let's, let's you back love up to, this to this yeah. trophy thing, though. Um, creating an exceptional entry. If it's rewarded by a trophy, that that's absolutely awesome. Actually, usually it's a collection of work that gets a trophy. Um, it, it's great to win a trophy. It's it's awesome. It feels good. We've both won a couple. We've both won good ones, and you've won extremely good ones because you're that much better than I am. Um, and that's just oh a really God. really stop okay. It. Whatever. Okay, stop you it. stop. Yes. Um, <laughs> But that's the bonus for us. But you have to keep in mind that not every exceptional entry is going to be rewarded in that manner. Um, and what I find is a lot of people go into competition with the idea that they're going to bring home a stack of trophies. And, you know, let's be realistic. We had a competition last week in um, Ohio, our state level, and there were 275 entries. But there were actually only about four trophies that went to individual images. Now, you know, if, if I had 72 people enter with their 275 images and all 72 thought that they were going to take home a trophy, then I've got about 68 people that are pretty ticked off. And we set ourselves up for things that aren't realistic. And so I think we should just stop looking at trophies as the end-all be-all and we should look more at the scores. Um, I really, really like consistency in scores. And uh, this good score to get is an 80 or above. That's what everybody aims for. So I think if you put in a case of work and every single entry in your case scores an 80 or above, you have proven that you can create a consistently good body of work. And right there, that should be your reward. You know, sorry that there's not a trophy to go along every single time, but... You know, it is what it is. So I'd like to see people get off that trophy thing. It really irritates the heck out of me. And, you know, I think that I can really, really reform my trophy budget at Ohio if I just give away cupcakes. What do you think about that? That I would actually be incredible, and that would motivate me even more. Um, <laughs> but I don't want one cupcake. You know what I'm saying? Who eats one cupcake? I mean, I don't know these kinds of people that eat one cupcake, okay? I'm eating at least five or six, you know, at one time. I mean, that could be my problem, but... 
right? I mean, am I doing it wrong, or is that the way you're supposed to do it? Or? I don't know. I'll have to say um, that's kind of how I do Thin Mints. You know, it's Thin Mint season right now. I actually have a box God. on my desk right in front of me, arm's length, but I will not chew on them while we're recording. Um, you know, the great thing about Thin Mints is they come in these awesome one-serving sleeves. There's two of them in each. You got to put them in the fridge, though. Do you, do you put them in the fridge and get oh, them cold? Oh no, dude! I freeze them. In the beginning, oh, I, put them, <laughs> I put them in the Even freezer better. so I wouldn't eat them. Do you know how quickly I developed an appetite for frozen Thin Mints? I'm telling you. Fro- so how how do you so they're fr- how do you bite into that? Are they like? They're I'm, thin. I'm, I always put them in the fridge and they're cold. But Pay yeah, attention they're, to them. Guess, they're yeah, okay. thin God. mints. It's not wow. hard to chew them. They're, yeah. they're just really, really cold. That's all. They taste great. It makes the mint pop. Oh, my God. I haven't had those in forever. I mean, we used to get them more. I, I, let's put it this way. I don't need them. Okay? That's the last thing I need is a thin mint. Okay? Um, oh, I need So I just go back mints. to, I mean... You're trying to deviate back to the Thin Mints, but I, I think just the whole thing with comp, though, is like it all goes back to the it all it all goes back to the mindset, the mindset that you come in with. I mean, that's kind of like my three my three que- you know the three questions I ask myself, and it's like that's what keeps me rooted is because in the end, yeah, you can't you can't have that goal of, of I'm going to get a stack of stuff because like like you said, that's totally true. There's a ton of images that are exceptional that even score really well. That don't go home with an award. So, and, and we've all, you know, it's one of those things. We've all been there, right? I mean, you get right. something that do, does fall into that category, and then you don't, an and you don't get something, and it's like we have an example from last example? year. I, I, you and I competed last year with albums <clears throat> in the non-event album category in Ohio, and we tied. Yes, we each got a ninety-six for an album. <clears throat> And your album Which I think got was the highest scores. It was. It was the highest score in the entire competition. And um, But you went home with a trophy for yours, and I didn't go home with anything for mine. And I, I have to admit, I'll, I'll be an honest person here, that sort of did nag at me a little bit. You know, but I got over it. Um, certainly didn't get ticked off about it and scream and yell and throw a tantrum because that 96 was an awesome reward all by itself. But, you know, we did have well, that Well, the tantrum, it, the, the tantrum is debatable, but, you know, we'll let that slide, I guess. I mean, <laughs> here's the thing, though, with awards. Okay, here's the thing with awards. And I use, you know, when, when I win stuff, I will use it absolutely in my marketing. Okay, I'll use it where I can. And my and I've told you this before. My mindset with awards is when it comes to clients and, and that, that realm – I rarely, if ever, will just openly talk about that myself. Like during a, a wedding console or something, rarely, if ever, will I ever bring that up and be like, hey, by the way, I won this and that. What I do, though, I will include it, though, on the website. I'll include it in writing materials, uh, in my written materials, my marketing materials and all that. I'll put it out there so people can see it and they can digest it. Um, but I don't, I don't like humble brag it. You know what I'm saying? Like I'd rather, my thing is, okay, if I've won something, whatever, there it is. Like it's it's in the material. You can see it. I let that speak for itself, you know. Um, and in the end, I really let my images speak for myself when it comes to booking clients. But what I'm trying to get at is, honestly, in the end, you can use this stuff. It helps differentiate yourself. But I'm telling you, clients, in the most part, I really don't think they care about this stuff. I really don't. You know. I mean, I don't know. You're, you don't shoot. You don't shoot weddings. So maybe it's a little bit different. But it's the same thing. I mean, you get your portrait clients. Do you think they really care about the awards? I mean, to a point where. They are booking you because you won this and that. I mean, a vast majority of clients, do you think that's the case? Well, I, you know, I'm not sure. I, I think da, da, da. the silence. I'm, yeah, yes. I'm going to disagree with you just a tiny bit. Um, uh oh. They, they care in a certain way. They don't understand what we're doing. But I can tell you, when I had a trophy display in my studio, I've, I've now removed it, it's, it's in my office, um, but when I had my trophy display in my studio, people would walk in and stop there and just look and look and look and look at it. Because you have to admit, you know, after a certain number of glass trophies, it starts looking like a pretty impressive collection. Um, for me, but I'm like you, I really don't like to talk about them a lot and I would prefer that they didn't get all hung up for 10 minutes in front of the trophy case and ask me about every single thing now they were it's great because they're impressed and a lot of them actually come to me because I really use the press release thing Um, I come from a small town and so anytime I send a press release in 
99% of the time will make it into the paper. The only time I've not had one make it in is when I was kind of lax about getting it in in a timely manner. And by the time I gave it to them, it had been like three weeks and it was old news. So I never made that mistake again. But my community is small enough to where I put in press releases, everybody sees them, and that sparks interest. Every time we have an, a convention where I put in a press release, my calls do go up. So in some aspects, it is important, but it's not the main thrust of what I do. And I don't use them to try and, you know, convince people. I do the same thing as you do. It's, it's in my resume on my website, but, um, you know, that's about it. But I, th I think in a way they're at least impressed by them. I think it's a good thing. It differentiates yourself. Um, it differentiates yourself from, from other photographers. Um, and that's, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, anything you do in your marketing in that kind of sphere of thinking that can show that you're a bit different than everybody else in some way. I think awards accomplish that, you know, I think it's a good thing. Um, I just, I don't know. I personally think with wedding clients, a lot of them, and here's the, and this is going to be probably another podcast um, cause we're getting to that point, but I, I find like wedding clients, they're more interested in something like, like a wedding wire award or a not award. And I, again, oh. I'm not downplaying that. I mean, oh, well, listen, here's my I thing, guys. Let and, me any, do it. I'll no, no. Well, well, here, let me, let me, let, let me, let me say this. Let me just say this. Okay, I am pro anyone that wants to market something as long as they're they're being intellectually honest about it and not, you know, and doing doing anything naughty like that. But anything that people want to do to market themselves, I'm I'm for. Okay, I'm not like the the the, the police here that are going to monitor what you do. I just think it's kind of silly sometimes when brides, especially and and. I've talked to other conversate uh, other photographers that we had this conversation. A few that have won some substantial awards okay on the national level and and brides will come in and they'll discount that and they'll be like hey well have you won this wedding wire thing or the not things i don't see that many and it's just funny that brides tend to put more of an emphasis on something like that than something that actually relates back to your photography because in the end right they're hiring you for your photography shouldn't that be the most important thing that's why i love print comp awards like to to, to market them because i feel that shows that I'm a very competent photographer. And if you're coming in to the studio to sit down to talk to me, it's because you're contemplating hiring me as a photographer. So shouldn't the photography be, I mean, you, the personality and all that's important, the brand and the reputation, that is important. Don't get me wrong. But in the end, I mean, photography should be towards the top of that list, right? Of what things should be important. Absolutely. And I've always found it funny that they, that they kind of like discount that a little bit. No, I don't think that they discount it. What they do is they value what they know the most about. And they've been hanging out on the knot for the last six months planning their wedding. So they have st they have seen these other things. I can guarantee you, I'm not a wedding photographer anymore, but I can guarantee you nobody goes on those wedding boards and brags about PPA awards. They brag about the ones that the, the brides see all the time, the ones that are easy to get. Yeah. I, you know what? The year after I quit being a, a wedding photographer, I got notified that I was voted or I was awarded the top wedding photographer in, in my town. And that was just a laugh because there oh my, was wait, no Wait, wait, is that what, what, what company was that? I think I know. It was that blue trophy that they would send you yes, a picture of yes, and your name trophy, was already yes, on it. Yes. But in order to get yes. that trophy in your hands, it was like 129 bucks. You know, they were just selling the well, trophy basically. But people use those. People use those to brag that they <sighs> won a trophy. And it's like nobody knows that they paid for it. I don't even think they understood that it wasn't a real award. It was a scam to get 129 bucks off of them. I, you know, I've seen that before and I've gotten that email and, um, that's kind of ridiculous. I mean, I, I don't know how they're even able to do that. I mean, I guess they are. They just sell it, and it's like, it's it's kind of silly. You look at your own, you know, we compete and we do all this stuff, and I like to think the things that we are awarded for, it's because of, of a lot of hard work and all that. And I look at that kind of stuff, and it's kind of makes me chuckle. It's like um, well, anyone yeah. that chooses to go that route and to buy a fake award, it's like, I mean, dude, just don't do it at all. I mean, it's kind of ridiculous to, to get something totally made up, you know? Well, and not only that, who believes an email that they won an award for a contest they never entered? Give me a break. <laughs> that's a good, Seriously. That's a good point. It's a really good point. And the thing point. with the wedding wire, like the, the wedding wire especially, it's like they always, whatever they, I think they call it. The, and here's the funny thing. I don't even advertise the wedding wire awards. The, I mean, we've, we've won a bunch. You know, I don't really keep track of them, but they'll send me an email. Um, I don't even put those on the site. I mean, if you go on the site, there's no badges or anything because it's all fine and dandy, but it's like, dude, that's... 
that if that's what's drawing you to me, then we're probably not a good fit. You know, I'd ra- if if you care at all about awards, which I don't care if you care about them, but if you do, I want you to care about the things that I've worked my butt off because of my skill and me trying to become a better photographer. Um, you know, by really pushing myself and creating images that that go beyond the norm. Like that's what I want you to be excited for. And the wedding wire thing, especially, what I was going to say is like they always tout that this is like the top 5% of, of vendors receive this award. Yet I see everyone getting this award. I mean, like, how big is the top 5%? I mean, is that, does that just show how many photographers there are there? It's like everyone I know has it. So are we all in the top 5%? I mean, who's in the bottom 95%, you know? <laughs> I don't, <laughs> That's I don't, a good I don't get it at all. I really don't. You know, is that really the one don't. where Wedding Wire just contacts you? Or is that one of the ones... And, you know, stop me before I start vomiting here. But is that one of the ones that you get awarded depending (laughs) on how many of your friends you got to go to the site and vote for you? Because honestly, if you are bragging about an award you got because you got the most votes, oh, gosh, just shut up. Sorry. I think it's I think it's based on review. supposedly it's based on reviews, but Wedding Wire. Okay, here's the thing: we use Wedding Wire in, in the sense that I don't pay for advertising, but um, brides can go and leave reviews there, and I, I think that's fine and dandy. Um, but they, I mean, oh my gosh, there's a million threads about Wedding Wire being. Let's see, how should I say? Very unethical with some of their some of the techniques they use for trying to market towards. I mean, I've heard horrible things about people in contracts with them and them doing crazy stuff and. Um, it's just it sounds like a mess over there. I've heard of people like you know you'll you'll be up for renewal and you won't hear from a bride all year in terms of like getting contacted by a bride through that referral source and then two weeks before your renewal you'll get four inquiries. Like I have heard that so many times through oh, wedding wire that it's ridiculous. But right around I, the I think time the award is a, you're yeah, trying to decide yeah. and if then you're going to renew, right? Abs- absolutely, absolutely. So I think it's kind of funny with that. But supposedly that award is like if you get. A certain number of good reviews, you get the award. But I'm telling you, everyone has one. Like everyone does. I mean, it's like you know what? I don't though? know. Again, if people want, to, if people want to use that, it's fine. But I think it's kind of silly. You know? If you ask all the brides from the first year that I taught weddings, and you and I, I've never showed you the first year. I've never showed you any of my wedding work because I, I would be embarrassed actually. Um, but the very we're first we're going to do a year, YouTube um, a, a YouTube video podcast next week, and you'll be sharing some of those, right? Is that the problem? Uh, I could pull them out, but they, had, you know, now I was decent. <laughs> I was decent. I wasn't amazing, but I was decent. I got the job done. I didn't screw anybody over. But my brides loved me. They loved me. They gave me great reviews, but my photography wasn't that great. But they loved what I did for them. They loved my pictures because they were in them. So honestly, I think if you are proactive with contacting your brides and asking them to put a review up for you, it's going to be good. So the number of good reviews, I don't know. I don't think that that really means a whole lot. It's it's not um, it's not an appropriate measure of your talent. I think reviews can be good. I think in 2017 with a lot of people, it's kind of like, you know, a bride emails you and then you wait two days to email her back. And then when she goes to review, she gives you like two out of five stars for communication. Like people are kind of ridiculous with that kind of stuff now. I feel like years ago people were a little bit more, I don't know what the word is, uh, more understanding, a little more realistic with some of the stuff. But now it's like you get people that will just say the most ridiculous things when nothing really happened to them, but they, they assume that, you know, like I said, you waited a couple of days to email, therefore now it's like the end of the world and you were horrible in a communication and they write reviews that are so exaggerated. Um, it's it's kind of it's tough now, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I feel like you can do an incredible job, but there's like one thing you do wrong and they'll go and blast you. And you know how a lot of people are too, you know, it's like this revenge kind of culture too, you know, it's like, Man, I'm going to teach that person a lesson, you know? It's like they may, I feel like they slighted me and people like make it their And don't get me I mean there's going to be people that do something horrible. Like I get it. There are businesses that are totally a disaster and they deserve that kind of treatment, but I feel sometimes you know, you do your best and you you do something, you know, you like I say you forget the communication. I see it all the time cuz I look at these reviews from other people and, and some of the things that we've had too, you know, over the over the past decade and it's like, man, everything was was fine. And it's like you do this one thing, and then they they want to use this opportunity to totally 
like blast you, you know, for something that didn't really happen, you know? Yeah, it's that whole, you know, um, anonymity, even though it's not anonymous at this yeah. point, but they are done dealing with you and never have to see you again, and now they're all brave behind yeah. their keyboard. Um, you know, speaking of yeah. reviews, yep. and I, I get reviews can be great in the right situation. I just didn't really think that that was great for getting a trophy for it. But um, one of the review systems yeah. that I really can't stand is Facebook, their their star thing. Um, yeah. Oh, my God. I went in there, and uh, right now I have a 4.9 rating on my stars on Facebook. And that annoys me. That annoys me so bad. Because every single person has left a five, except for one person that left a four. And can you believe it is a person that I never did any work for? Never. Yep. I believe it. I believe it because I have the same issue. You're at a 4.9. I think um, I think on one of my pages I have it turned off or I never had it turned on or whatever. But one, I think the Nouveau Images page, um, I think we're at 4.6 or 4.7. And there's a handful of fours and threes from people that we've never worked with at all. Yeah. Um, and there's no way, and I've gone through a few of them and I've like commented and been like, Hey, you know, since we didn't work with you, would you mind removing? It's like people, I don't know what it is. I don't know if they're purposely doing, it. I don't know if people are accidentally putting a rate, they're browsing through and they put something and they just don't care about it. I don't know what I think, it is, but it's, it's I think horrible. they think that, um, there it's their opinion of your work and not, you know, it's their opinion of your work. It's not a review of uh. work you did for them. And, I, you know, the one oh, person gosh. that scored me a four, and, you know, in the grand scheme of things, four out of five is not a bad rating, but it messed up my perfect five. And uh, I even wrote the guy. You were so OCD. And You're so OCD. I know. I, it's OCD, OCD I'm to buddy. Say. Um, OCD, I can talk. It's okay. <laughs> but, any, you know, I wrote the guy, and I said, hey, you know, I, I saw that you um, rated me a four out of five, and thank you for that, but, you know, do you understand that this is for people that I have done work for, and you and I both know that I've not done work for you? And it was an older fellow who absolutely had no idea how that happened, did not know how to delete it, didn't use Facebook very well at all, and it was just like talking to a brick wall to have him remove that. He never did, and I'm, I'm considering, you know, if that's how they're going to do it, I, I might just get rid of that on my page since it's not really relevant. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's kind of crazy. In theory, it's a great system, but, man, sometimes it could, could hurt you um, unnecessarily. Um. Yeah, <laughs> but you can win a wedding wire award. I mean, that's the that's the upside, right? I mean, you could be in the top five percent of um of of whatever they whatever made up thing that they have for that. Um, it would be I interesting. See, now now to we know. sound horrible, right? No, it sounds you, horrible. I mean, we're, you say we're, that about everything that comes out of your mouth. I'm going to say this. This probably <laughs> sounds terrible. You know, get some confidence in your opinion. Don't waver. I do. Hmm. <laughs> I don't waver. Again, my thing is people could use whatever they wanted to market themselves. I, I have no problem with that. And it's just my personal thing is, man, if I get awards, I want it to be for my work. And I want people, if they care about awards, I want them to care about that, you know, because that's what they're hiring me for in the end. They're, they're hiring me for the experience and all that stuff. But in the end, it's the work that they buy, right? It's the work that they hang up, I mean, on the wall and all that stuff. Um, so that's what I want to, if I'm trying to impress them, that's what I'm trying to impress them with. Not that it's about impressing them, obviously. It's about... It's about growing my own skill, and that's what competition does. So I'm sure we'll get into that more a little bit down the road. Um, that's a pretty big topic. Um, any other thoughts? I'm about to eat dinner, so that's going to be kind of awesome. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be doing the same thing here shortly. Um, you know, well, this is, you know, competition is is my pet project. Um, if you are thinking about doing comp, think a little harder about it. And, and drop me a line. I'm Hit me up on social media. I can um, point you in the right direction, get you started. I have a competition mentoring group. Um, we can chat because if you want to grow in your craft and you belong to an organized organization, they will have a competition system. And if you get in it, that will do nothing but help your work. So I, I can help you get started on that. And I'd be happy to. Everybody should do comp. What exactly is an organized organization? <laughs> is that what can I you, said? Can you elaborate that? I'm can you sorry. elaborate that? A photographic, a professional, a professional organization. Like our particular organizations are the Professional ah. Photographers of America. 
and on a state level it's the professional photographers of Ohio and I actually belong to a local group we have three local groups in Ohio and they're just in geographic areas we have one in the Cincinnati area one in the Columbus area and then I belong to the Akron group the Akron Society of Professional Photographers so you know those are the kind of groups the 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 professional organizations not um, you know what am I going to say? You know, sideways Ohio city of amateur photographers, you know, <laughs> you know watch you, it, watch it, watch camera it. Camera club. You know, it's not a camera club. That's my group. How dare you? That's my group. How dare you? <laughs> I formed that group. I You're totally a formed that group. Man. And I'm the, I'm a client and a, I'm a, what was the line from the, the, was it the men's warehouse thing? I'm a client and I'm also the owner or something like that. I don't know, you know it all men's what I'm warehouse about. or the hair club for men. Hair hair club for men, I think, is what it yeah. used to be. The old ads it was like, I'm not only the president, but I'm also a client. Cause oh, I was bald yeah, because men's whatever warehouse was, was yeah. you're gonna like the way you look. Yeah, and then they ditched that guy. That guy, like, I forgot what happened. He like they fired him or something. That guy who like started that company. I really? forgot his name, but some some. Yeah, it was something weird like that. I like, love their yeah, commercials. Was... I thought, how simple a message is that? You're going to like the way you look. You know, that should be your tagline. You are going to love your wedding images. Because you are. I just want to steal that exact one. You're going to like the way you look. Boom. Ooh. Copy it. There you nothing go. Wrong, nothing unethical about that. Nothing unethical <laughs> about that. Hey, way back. Well, guys, the... um, yes. What? Say it. Say it. What? Well, I know. We're winding up. But I have to I have to go back. At the beginning of the podcast, Um, you asked me yes. what the historical background was to the word oh, boca. yes and i Let's looked it up it. and um it was popularized in 1997 in photo techniques magazine um wow. when the editor Look had three different papers on that topic but really it comes from the japanese word and it's spelled b-o-k-e uh it doesn't tell me how to pronounce that but it means blur or haze and it's also a derivative wow. of the word B O K E hyphen A J I, so Boca Aji, which means the blur quality. So it's Japanese in origin. Wow, that is now you can wrap the up the show. Boring thing you've ever heard on a on a podcast. <laughs> We've ended with that. <laughs> I've always wondered. I mean, I don't know. You've heard the you've heard the term. Well, now you know. Okay, guys. So this was this was number two. Okay, so if you guys are on Facebook. If you're on Facebook, you want to search for Make Photography Great Again Podcast. You can see the page there. You can see updated links to the most recent podcast on there. Also, if you are on the internet, on the interwebs, you will want to go to MakePhotographyGreatAgainPodcast.com. You will find that same info on there as well as some other uh, interesting humble brags about us. Um, and, of course, social media, all the other usual suspects, you will find us on there. Until next time... Aim higher than a wedding wire award, okay? That's all I got to say. <laughs> Ta -ta. Can, can, I, can I end off like that? Yeah. yeah okay, see you guys. Bye-bye. <laughs> bye. Wait, can we keep saying bye until one of us finally... Bye. You hang up first. This is a collective bye. Okay, see ya. Bye. You have been listening to Make Photography Great Again with Christine Walsh-Newton and Ted Linsack. Come back next Tuesday for a brand new episode. For more information and access to the podcast archive, please visit our website, makephotographygreatagainpodcast.com.